Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Wednesday, the 1st of November. And the 1st of November, of course, is All Saints Day. So we've moved out of, as we, as we say in the church, we've moved away from ordinary time, and we're now in the season leading up to Christmas. And we start the season with All Saints Day. Today we remember, so All Saints Day is to remember all the believers who have gone before us, the, 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 the ones that we have designated as saints in the church. Now, of course, all of us are saints in one way, but there are extraordinary Christians, Christians who have lived um, such, um, such holy lives uh, and have contributed such such amazing um, work to the life of the church and many of them are martyred themselves for the faith um, we call them saints because they they live a, a, a much more holier life than most of us they we say they live nearer to god in the presence of god more while they lived on earth than most of us do. And so we, 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 the church designates those people as saints. And, um, and so today is All Saints Day. So we remember all of them, all the saints who have gone before us. And, um, and, uh, and of course, we, we remember the churches that are named after the saints. So we think of All Saints churches. We, we have uh, um, two All Saints, actually in Newham, All Saints in West Ham, and All Saints in Forest Gate. So, so remember the All Saints churches as well as churches that are dedicated to all the saints that have gone before us. Let's pray as we start this new day afresh. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you, they make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. 
the heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Amen. So let's, uh, let's go to our psalm. And our psalm this All Saints Day is Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Psalm 111, first the refrain. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them, his work is full of majesty and honor, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvelous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures forever. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer, gracious God, you are full of compassion. May we who long for your kingdom to come re rejoice to do your will and acknowledge your power alone to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go to our first reading. Let's leave let's leave the canticles and go to our first reading. And our first reading is Jeremiah thirty one. Jeremiah thirty one, from verse thirty one to thirty four. So Jeremiah the prophet, thirty one, from verse thirty one to thirty four. Right. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant, though I loved them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, 
nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, will know me already, says the Lord. And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a powerful reading, those four verses. Well, here we are, Jeremiah is looking forward to a day, a day when God's people will, will inhabit God, as it were, or God will dwell with his people in such a way that they will know him so intimately that no longer will they, will they as he said, will they say to another, you need to know the Lord, because they will all know the Lord. The Lord will be so intimately involved in the lives of his people that they all will have a, a, a deep relationship, a, a personal, intimate relationship with God. I will put my instructions deep within them and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they be able to break my covenant, he said. The, the ones of old, they, they have broken my covenant. He said, in, the, they broke that covenant, though I love them as a husband loves his wife. But this new covenant that I'm going to give them, I'm going to put it in their hearts, and I'm going to be so intimately involved with them that they will not be able to break it. And they will not, and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives. Everyone from the least to the greatest will know will know me already. I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. That's, that's a future time. Of course, that, 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 that time began with the coming of Jesus. Jesus inaugurated the new covenant. But now we live in that period of, 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 of redemption and we await the time of consummation when the fullness of this new covenant will come to pass. When when, when we will be so intimately involved with God that, 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 that we will know him in, uh, instinctively, as it were, uh, intuitively, uh, well, because, because he, his laws will be written fully on our hearts. We have, we have entered that, that, that time, that stage of God's covenant relationship with us. But we are not yet, we are not there at the fullness yet, because we still do wickedly. We still, we, 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 we still break the covenant in, in, in various ways in our lives today. But the day is coming when we will no longer be able to break that covenant, because we will be so intimately uh, connected with God. And, and, and in a sense, as we are reflecting on the saints today, that's what the saints enjoy today in the glory of God, in the presence of God. Um, no longer do they do wickedly. No longer do they sin. Um, I will forgive their wickedness. In other words, I will wipe the slate clean. I will never again remember their sins. Uh, that's what, when, when a believer departs from this life and enter into the presence of God, they, have experienced, they are experiencing this new covenant in fullness. That Jeremiah promised or uh, prophesied. We are still uh, partially experiencing it. One day, by the grace of God, we will enter that presence of God where, where we, will, we will be so intimately involved with, in God's presence that no longer will we break the covenant. Uh, we will know God instinctively and intuitively. But for now, we are still in that in that in between time where we are struggling in many ways to keep that covenant but uh, but we're still better off than the old covenant because they had it written on the outside we have it written the laws of God the rules of God the commands of God we have it written on our inside on our hearts but we look forward to the day when we will be will be so intimately connected to God that no longer will we break that covenant the saints are enjoying that now, who have gone before us, and one day, by God's grace, we will join them. 
All right, let's, uh, let's move to our second reading, which is um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 5 to 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Starting at verse 5. It's a great chapter to read, actually. The, the whole chapter of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 is very powerful. But we are reading from verse 5. It's good to meditate on 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Every word in, that, in this chapter is, is filled, is packed with life for our souls. It's food, um, solid food for the, for the, for the spirit. Chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. But let's start with chapter, verse 5. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts. So we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I just want to, that just hit me right there. Powerful stuff. We know, we now, we now have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like a fragile clay jars, or like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we are never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Hallelujah. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus, so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, you know, I'm, I said the whole chapter is powerful and worth meditating on, but even those few verses that I just read um, requires a great deep, great, great, level of depth and thought to, to, to just unpack what Paul is teaching us here. We are broken vessels. We are fragile vessels. Let's start there. And, and yet God has chosen to, to, to shine his light into this broken vessel. And, 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 and what Paul is saying is that it's a reminder to us that the, the, that our, the power that is in us is not from us, but from God. Because in fact, we are, we are fragile clay jars, he says. And we contain this great treasure. What is the great treasure? The great treasure that, we, that this clay jar contain is the glory of Christ, the light of Christ. The, 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 the presence of Christ dwell in this broken vessel, in this fragile clay jar. And Paul says, God does this to remind us that the power that's in us is not from us. It's from him because we have no power of our own. And so we, we go through trials and temptations and sufferings in our lives. We are hard pressed, but not we are, we are, we we are we have trouble on every side, but we are not crushed, um, perplexed, not but not despair, and so on. We suffer in our bodies daily. We suffer all sorts of 
of, of problems. But yet, in our suffering, in our suffering, the glory of Christ still shines. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be seen in our bodies. It, our bodies undergo suffering. We undergo suffering, Paul says, in order for Christ to shine through us. And so the, 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 the suffering is a reminder of our frailty. It's a reminder of our fragility. It's a reminder of the fact that we are clay jars. We are fragile. We are broken. But yet, through that suffering, the glory of Christ shines out. The, the power of Christ, the life of Christ becomes evident in our lives. And so, yes, he says, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Christ so that the life of Christ will be evident even in our dying bodies. This is, this is absolutely rich stuff. And, you know, it, it, if we get this, this idea that even in our sufferings, the light of Christ is shining out. Even in our dying bodies, Christ's life is being, is being displayed. Then we have a different perspective on our suffering. We have a radically different perspective on our physical ailments. Because in our brokenness, in our fragility, in our physical suffering, the, the glory of Christ will come through if we are truly is so so we even though we face death every day the we live in the face of death he says but this has resulted in eternal life for you he, he's talking to the believers he says we live in the face of death every day but through our facing of death through our our, our persecution and suffering it results in eternal life for you in your situation for you for, for well it's really for all of us because of the the suffering that of uh, that we go through in our bodies christ glory is being revealed so let's let the, the, the first bit that i that um that i reflected on when i when i was reading for god who said let there be light in the dark has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. The same God who created light out of darkness, who said, light be, has now said the same thing in me <laughs> and, and in you. Now he's, he's created that very light in our darkness, in the darkness of our lives. So that the glory of God might be seen in the face of Jesus Christ through us. We become the face of Christ. We become the glory of God. We shine now. We now shine. Despite our frailty. Despite our fragility. Despite our brokenness. God has shone his light in us. So that we can shine with the light of Christ in the world. Amen. 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 Let's 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 pray. Uh, this is it's it's quite it's quite riveting stuff. Um, as I said, if we grasp the implication of this truth, sisters and brothers, the way we understand our suffering will be radically different. And in fact, and that's why I said the whole. I I, I know the time is going, but that's why I said the whole of. Chapter 4 is powerful because then Paul goes on to say in, in verse 16, 17, and 18. Uh, and just listen to this. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the outward troubles 
Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. We don't, we, we must take heart and not worry about the things we go through because those things are temporary. But the things that, the things that Christ has done for us, that he's doing in us is unseen. So we don't, we change our perspective on our reality. We change our perspective on our situation. Our perspective should be an eternal perspective, a heavenly perspective, not the earthly one that we have most of the times about our lives and our problems. When we see our problems through, the, through this light, through the, through, through the lens of the gospel, radically changes how we understand our suffering and what we are going through in this world. So let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful for your grace in seeing a new day, indeed, a new month. And so Lord, as we start this, this new month, this month of November and this All Saints Day, as we get closer to the end of the year and indeed to the celebration of the incarnation of our Lord, at Christmas, we ask, Lord, for your sustaining grace along our journey of faith. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us more and more for the journey. Lord, we are, we are jars of clay. We are vessels of clay. We are fragile. We are weak. We are broken, even. And yet, Lord, you have chosen weak, fragile clay vessels to shine with the glory, with your glory, with the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we pray that you will give us the strength we need, fragile and broken as we are, every day, indeed, to shine with the glory of Christ. So shine out with his glory, with his power, with his love, with, with his grace to those around us, to those in our families, to those in our lives, and even to ourselves. May we, may we, be, may, may, may we be able to see the uh, Christ, as, get, a, get the perspective of, it, of eternity on all of our problems and uh, the issues we go through. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for, for the members of our own community. We pray. We pray for those who are sick and suffering or dying. We pray, Lord, for the weak and the fragile, the vulnerable. We pray for those, especially we know, in our own church family. And so, Lord, as we say, you know their names, you know indeed their needs. We pray for our sister Doreen, Jean and Walter and Monica, Dion, Sue and, uh, and Daisy and family, Veronica and Chester, Dolly and Desmond, Jean and Joanna, Pat and Ray, Pauline and Daphne. We pray for our sister Daphne still in the hospital, going treatment, undergoing treatment. We pray Lord for for a speedy recovery for her. And uh, we pray that uh, the treatment that she's going through will be successful in bringing her back home healthy, we pray. We pray for Muriel and David and Surya, Veronica, Monica and Cheryl, Charity and Pippa and Duke and Radcliffe and Pauline. We pray for Archdeacon Elwin. We pray for Mr. Gray. Andy and Anita, Una, Dorothy, Noel, and Jackie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray for our sister Stella, who lost her sister, whose, whose sister passed away this week. So remember our sister Stella and her family as they mourn the passing of their loved one. Also, just remember my own family especially my sister and the family in Jamaica, as they mourn, as we, 
indeed, as we mourn the passing of our matriarch, our mother, and as we prepare for her farewell service. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us grace, O Lord, in our time of need, so that we will find the strength we need to sustain us and to, to keep us and to guide us and to strengthen us for the journey that you have placed us on, this journey of faith that you have called us to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the people of our world and indeed those who are suffering in war and violence in our world. We pray, O oh God, we pray. We pray for mercy for the people of Gaza. Lord, have mercy upon those people who are suffering in such great pain from bombs and guns. Oh, Lord, have mercy on the people of Gaza. Lord, we, we call out to you to protect the children, the vulnerable, the, the, the people of Gaza who are, as it were, innocent bystanders, who have no, 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 issues in this fight and yet they are the ones suffering the majority the brunt of the, the the front line of this battle between israel and hamas oh god have mercy on the people of gaza have mercy on them we pray deliver them oh lord from the bombs from the guns from the weapons from of both the Hamas and Israel. Lord, deliver the people of Gaza who are caught in the middle. Oh, help them, Lord, we pray. And Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine and we continue to ask for your intervention in that war. God, have mercy on them and deliver them from Putin's weapons and, and Putin's army. Deliver the people of Ukraine from the war that has been waged against them. Lord, have mercy on them. We pray for the people in Sudan again. That civil war is still going on. We pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and bring relief to those who are suffering, especially from war and violence in our world. We pray, Lord, for those who are, uh, again, who are suffering from disasters of all sorts in our world, from, from earthquake to, to the, the change in the climate and the weather that causes drought and, 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 and famine and, 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 and floods. Lord, we pray that you will protect and save those who are caught in the midst of these other disasters in our world, the natural disasters that, that happen as a result of the sinfulness and brokenness of this world. We pray for those who suffer in, uh, from, from these disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear our prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for your church, your people whom you have called out of darkness, into your marvelous light. We pray for the saints on earth. Lord, we thank you that you have called your church. You have, you have called us to be your church, to be your people, uh, to be holy and to be blameless before you. And we pray that you will sustain us and keep us to the very end when we shall enter into your presence and glorified and we will and we will no longer suffer and, 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 and die in this world, but we will experience the eternal life that you have promised us in the fullness of your presence. And so, Lord, watch over your church, protect your church as we struggle in the wilderness of this world to, to, to keep your laws and to, to reflect your glory in the world. Lord, empower your people in every corner of our world to reflect your light, to shine with your light, broken as we are, fragile as we are. May your people shine with the light of Jesus 
in the darkness of this world so that those in the darkness will see the light and, and be attracted to that light in us, the light of Christ who shines forth from our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 Before I, before I pronounce the grace, I do want to say thank you to everyone who has, um, who has offered well wishes um, on the passing of my mother. And so thank you for all of your prayers and all of your kind words. Um, please continue to keep me and my family in your prayers as we um, plan her farewell service, which is going to be, oh, you all being well, sometime in December before Christmas. <laughs> so keep us in your prayers. Um, and thank you. And thank you. It is through your prayers that we will find strength, sisters and brothers. And though may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you along your journey today and give you his all-sufficient grace to shine with the glory of Christ in your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers. <laughs>